She relapsed in October 2011, and at that point, uh, we knew it wasn't kind of the standard garden variety leukemia. Then she relapsed again in February 2012, and so it was at that point that um, we made the decision that we needed to go somewhere else where um, we, we knew we needed to try something new and something different. We were told that we were down to 48 hours of making a decision or she could start to have organ failure. And we knew that there were things offered here that, was, um, that would be different from what a local hospital could offer and things that um, were more, um, I guess, cutting edge, uh, newer things that were being tried that weren't being tried anywhere else. So we're really down to the CART-19 is what's left for Emily to cure her. So we're ready, ready to go today. Right now we're feeling um, hopeful, really hopeful. It's a little bit scary because Emily is one of the first patients to receive this. She's the first pediatric patient. I've felt all along that she's going to beat cancer, and um, today's our day when we're going to start doing it. You want to say anything else, Em? What are we going to do today? What are we going to do today? Are you going to get your T cells? What are they going to do? Do you remember? Mm -mm. What are they going to take away? Cancer. Cancer, that's right. So CART-19 is a treatment for patients with uh, fairly advanced leukemia. Um, most patients who have the kind of leukemia that CART-19 treats, which is the most common kind of childhood leukemia, it's called B-cell ALL, um, that is a disease where most patients are treated very successfully with standard chemotherapy. But there's a subset of those patients uh, and a, a substantial number of children in the United States who, for whom chemotherapy does not work or it works temporarily. So for that group of patients who have very treatment resistant disease, uh, we need something brand new. And CART-19 is for those patients. The, essential nature of the CART-19 treatment is that we have to get cells from the patient. Uh, these, these cells are called T-cells. They're cells of the immune system um, that need to be engineered. We can engineer these cells to go after cancer cells and kill them. So Emily had her, uh, the, the CART-19 therapy, um, April 17th, and uh, we were told to expect that she would um, possibly get a little bit of a fever um, and feel like she had the flu, but uh, she ended up getting pretty sick shortly after and she was put on a ventilator because of how sick she was. They had come with a team of doctors in the PICU every morning and did rounds with us and we were always first and they would come to us and kind of show us a line on the floor and say if that's the line of survival Emily is almost stepped past it. During the few days when she was quite sick, she was receiving the most advanced medical care that's available on the planet. So the people in the hospital who were taking care of this child during the period she was quite sick until such time as we learned what was wrong, had a chance to intervene, and made her better. One of the results of her T cells growing in her body was that uh, she had uh, an increase in various proteins that uh, control the immune reaction. And this increase in those proteins was actually making her ill. Uh, we actually found that one of these proteins was quite elevated, and as it turns out, there's a drug that targets that exact protein. We gave her that drug, and she had a dramatic response. The ICU doctor on that night told me that he had never seen a patient that sick get better that quickly. We weren't sure at that time if the the CART-19 cells were working, if they weren't working. About three weeks after we gave her her T cells, we uh, did another bone marrow test. This young lady had not been in uh, a remission for a number of months, and she now was in a complete remission. So she completely responded to her T cell therapy. We were able to go home June 1st, and since that time, she's been, um, she's been great. She's been happy and healthy and, and returned back to school in the fall. You know, CART-19 was really the only option left for Emily. And although we weren't, we weren't sure how it was gonna work because she was the first child, um, we still felt like by enrolling her in the trial, um, even if it didn't work, it would give them a little bit more information and, and 
from that, hopefully they would learn something and be able to help other children. Um, you know, but we entered her into the trial really hopeful. She's extremely smart. She's very creative. She's funny. She makes us laugh all the time. I mean, she's, she never complains. She had told us, you know, from the beginning that she would continue to fight and uh, do what we ask as long as we were there with her. So, so we've both been there uh, through this entire fight, all three of us together, and uh, we just stick together as a team. And uh, she is she's definitely our hero. We've, we've checked her uh, bone marrow for the possibility of disease at two points. We checked her three months and now six months out from her treatment. She has no disease whatsoever. We need to treat a larger number of patients before we understand what the success rate might actually be. Seems like the cells stick around for a long time. That actually might provide long-term disease control. That is, of course, the most exciting potential part. But we need more time to know if that's actually where we are. To see her go from leaving the hospital and um, starting to recover to basically going to school and playing soccer and looking like every other kid uh, is just wonderful. I, I think it's the best thing about uh, doing what I do.